Leader of the Lib Dems, Sir Ed Davey, with me. Hi. Um, what do the government need to do to stop these strikes sorting themselves out? Well, they need to engage with the unions. They say know, they're doing that. Well, I think the meeting they had yesterday was pretty disappointing. They didn't come with... This is a, a meeting now. Well, a, a long last. It's taken them months. Uh, and that's one of the, my criticisms, is the government should have acted before. Um, and we're seeing patients and passengers disrupted and seeing this chaos because the government haven't got a grip of, uh, of the issue. So, yes, they need to talk, but they've got to come up with some, some practical way forward. And let's remember the health service, just take, take that, has been in crisis now for a, a long time. Does it need reform? Well, it needs reform, it needs more money, it, we need to look at social care. One issue Liberal Democrats have been talking about is the need to help our GPs. Our GPs are completely overworked um, and it's a real problem getting a GP appointment for many people across the country. We've, we've what if the Prime Minister would appear? Well, uh, I'm not going to comment on, on uh, him. It's, he's, got to, he's got to come clear, hasn't he? He's got to be more transparent. But what we do need for our country is more doctors. We need to hire more, we need to recruit more, we need to train more. So we want 8,000 more GPs. That would mean people could get the appointments. And what happens when people can't get a GP appointment okay. is either they okay. self-medicate... Mm. Well, we, we, for the recent survey shows that one in six people, when they can't get a GP appointment, are going online, mm. diagnosing and... And self-medicating, that's quite risky. Then one in five are going to the A&E and making the, uh, the, the issues for our hospital doctors and our nurses even, even more difficult. So Which... that's why Liberal Democrats are saying, solve the problem at source, make sure we're giving some real support to our GPs across the country. But people who can afford it, should they be paying to go privately for GP appointments at the moment and then those who can't afford it, in other words, mean-testing GPs? No, listen, people pay a lot in tax. A lot of people out there, a lot of your viewers who pay a huge amount of tax, it's not unreasonable for them to ask the government to provide quality services. And, you know... What the, about the, in the short term? Well, in the, in the short term, the government have got to step up. I mean, we, I've given you the ideas that the Democrats have for well, GPs. Well, it, it, there's some things you could do quickly. Let me give you an example. Um, we've been arguing that paramedics, that nurse practitioners, uh, that uh, pharmacists should have more ability to write prescriptions. Uh, go on a training course, many of them actually do, but they could do more of that. That would take some of the workload off GP, some bureaucracy, and that would free up more time. So things that we could do now. And I, I really despair uh, this government. Uh, let me give you another example, uh, uh, which people talk about a lot, and that's care. And I think you and I have talked about carers and, and social care before. Um, a lot of people are in hospital unnecessarily. And now the government made this announcement yesterday as if they just discovered it. They're going to put some money in the front line and we don't know when it's actually going to arrive. But they need a national plan, a proper plan, to make sure that people can be discharged more quickly, either to a care home or, frankly, to the home where they're giving far more support to the family and to the friends who can, can, can who want to take part. So you in think that, that is a good idea that the government's putting forward? Well, um, it, it's good that they've noticed that there's a problem here at long last. The Democrats have been talking about it for a long time. I don't think it's a proper plan. I think it's, I think uh, it's a minute step forward. I welcome it, but we've got to do far more. Mm. Far more, okay, if we're going to tackle that and make sure that people can be discharged to free up the bed so we, the ambulance can, can uh, uh, un unload and the patients can get the care they need without having to wait for hours. So, you know, whether it's making sure people can get those GP appointments, whether it's making sure patients are discharged, these are common sense solutions that Liberal Democrats and others have been talking about for years and the government have just. Uh, uh, not listened. And so this crisis, they try to blame it on COVID, don't they? And that, that really annoys me, because COVID may have made it a bit worse, and let's not made pretend it was. Lot. Yeah. But, but a lot of these problems were before COVID. I'll give you a classic example. We're an in, in, 20, in 2016, um, uh, George Osborne, the uh, former Tory Chancellor, in 2016, he got rid of uh, bursaries for student nurses. He did. And so fewer... Was it him or was it the um, present Chancellor? No, I think it was George Osborne, mm. to be fair. Uh, and uh, what happened was fewer people went into nursing, to study nursing. So we had a shortage of nurses. So a Conservative policy back in 2016 made uh, undermined our health service ahead of COVID, and it takes a while, as you were saying before, to train people. So a lot of these problems can be laid fair and squarely at the door of Conservative governments since 2015, uh, and I think people are now seeing that, and I think people 
really want to make sure that their families, their communities are properly looked after and they really feel that this government is out of touch. Um, can I talk to you about Westminster accounts? Yeah, sure. Um, let's have a look at uh, yours, should we? Since 2019, you've declared £441,600 in extra income, gifts and donations, all uh, completely above board, of course. The three largest sources of money include 121700 from Herbert Smith Free Hills, 57980 from Next Energy Capital and 30790 from Christopher Leach. Those are the three biggest. Um, First of all, how do you feel about that being highlighted in the way that it is at the moment with this tool? I actually welcome it and I actually want to praise Sky and Tortoise for doing this work. It's really important we have greater transparency and also because it's quite a complicated uh, set of issues that we have a proper debate about it. So I, I completely uh, welcome that. Uh, and I'm happy to go through uh, any of your questions about those numbers because, as you said in, uh, quite rightly, they've all been properly declared and they've all been totally above board. Mm. Uh, but previously, you were forced to resign from your two consultancy jobs. Uh, no, now, I wasn't. No, sorry. Tell me, go on. I, I voluntarily resigned. Okay, I was you, not you I, wasn't, I was absolutely not forced to resign. Let's say you stepped down from your two consultancy jobs. Uh, now you see that many other MPs um, have got secondary employment, which is very lucrative. Do you think that it was the right decision that you made to step down at the time? Yeah, I mean, let me tell you a little bit about those consultancies, yeah, the, 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 the figures you had for uh, Hurstmith Free Hills and Next Energy Capital. They were consultancies that I was doing to earn um, some money uh, in order to help support my son, John, who's severely disabled, who needs 24-7 care. Yeah. So that incurs extra costs now, and I'm an old dad, and I think about what's going to happen when I'm dead, who's going to look after him. So I was making some provision. Yeah. And um, I'm lucky enough to be able to do that. I know there are, you know, hundreds of thousands of families with disabled children, disabled relatives who, who aren't lucky enough to make provision. And one of the things I'm doing in Parliament is campaigning for them, uh, for carers, for disabled people, so they get a better deal, because I know how expensive it is, and that's no, I why, I, why I do those jobs. Now, why did I uh, voluntarily... Uh, step down from those was we had that scandal if you remember before uh, December last year in November December last year over the Conservative MP for Minister Owen Paterson who yeah, not only fact. not only did he have a lot of consultancies but he he broke the rules in a very very severe way and cons there was a big debate as you remember at the time um, Conservative MPs voted to protect him and then they had to renege on that protection of their own because uh, quite rightly, it was a public reaction to that rule breaking by Conservative M by Conservative MP, and I decided that I wanted to show some leadership on the issue of consultancies and second jobs, and I decided, although it was you know I am still thinking about my son, of course, I decided to resign from those, and I was therefore able to to make sure I could make the argument for greater transparency uh, and for tighter rules on jobs and donations, which is what Liberal Democrats have argued. I mean, we, we have led the debate in Parliament to get big money out of politics. We've argued for years now, OK, that we need to clean, clean this up, greater transparency. And we even had talks with the Conservative Labour Party a few years ago, and they walked away from some proposals to deal with this problem. And I, I, one, one reason I really welcome what you're doing with Toy Toys is I want to have that debate again. I want to clean up British politics. I want this transparency. I want tighter rules. And I want to reform uh, party finance. Yeah, so I suppose the, the, uh, my question remains, do you support MPs who have second jobs? Or given what's happened to you, and given some of the illustrations that we've made uh, with this new tool, do you think the rules should be clearer or you shouldn't have a second job if you're an MP? Well, I think there should absolutely be stricter rules and we need all the parties to get around the table to make sure they are like? clear. Well, first of all, we should make sure that um, consultancies in no way have any conflicts of interest at all. I think that's what people really, really worry about. And there is a case, which I'm really happy to engage with, about getting rid of all, all uh, second jobs. Um, but I'm, I'm also conscious that there are ones that help MPs do their jobs, or there may be specific uh, examples in their life. So I gave you the example of my son, John, who, um, who's severely disabled and needs that 24-7 care. And as a father, uh, I wanted to make sure I was making some provision for him. Mm. So there are examples like that that what would have to be part of the debate. engagements where you get paid £300,000 for an hour or whatever? Well, I don't know. Maybe it's Boris Johnson who has that one. I, I certainly have never <laughs> seen that. But um, you think that that uh, is reasonable within the remit of being an MP? 
Well, um, it, I would suggest that MPs would need to seriously look at themselves as being paid £300,000 for an hour's speech engagement and then the rules need to be tightened up on that. Fine, absolutely. That's really why I welcome this debate, Kay, because I think we have to have exactly that, that discussion. What about uh, people like Theresa May? who was the Prime Minister, and when she was the Prime Minister, she stopped some of her representatives going to the Middle East because of what had happened to Jamal Khashoggi, and then recently went to Saudi Arabia and got paid more than £100,000. Well, um, I don't know the specifics of that case. So, um, Check it out uh, on the tool. Yeah, but, but I think it's fair to any politician, I mean, Theresa May or anyone else from any political party, Liberal Democrat, Labour, Conservative, that they come on your programme. And one of the things I welcome about this initiative you've taken... But you would accept that that looks duplicitous on the face of it? Well, I think questions are rightly being asked about that, but I don't know what her answers are. So, I, neither do I. Yeah. I've, so, I've, so, I've, I've, so, I have asked her to come on the show, but... Well, I hope she does. Here we are. I, ho I hope she and any other... A politician from your analysis which raises questions, I think they should come and be transparent and answer for them uh, in the way that, that, that I've done and I know other colleagues have done mm. from all political parties. Um, and then, then the public, your viewing public, can, can decide whether or not uh, people have done the right thing. I mean, politics is complicated, you know, to, to stand for the leadership of the Liberal Democrats, for example, uh, I had to raise quite a lot of money. It was during COVID mm. and about a third of those donations are actually related to my bid to be leader of the party. Yeah. Uh, and but you do acknowledge that the rules do need to be changed? Yeah, no, 100%. I mean, Liberal Democrats have argued that for a long, long time, and that's why we welcome this. Um, all I was saying from my own side, and I'm saying it for colleagues who've been leaders of other parties, leadership candidates in other parties' internal elections, when you're in that category, you often have to raise money for those internal elections to see if you could become the leader of your party. And, uh, and it's as you can see, you were successful with that. Well, uh, yeah, uh, second time around. <laughs> well, there we go, hey. Um, just a very quick thought before I let you go. Um, you are obviously a very compassionate man. Um, what is your overriding emotion for Harry at the moment? Well, you know, I, I don't really want to comment on the royal, the royal family uh, issues. I don't think politicians I'm should. I'm talking about his but, state of mind. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to that. What I think, and I don't know about you, I, I've seen friends and families where there's there are disputes. And I think one of the reasons I mean, why this... a family that doesn't have one. Yeah, no, it, precisely. And those, th those, those natural disputes in families that occur you know, on almost every family can, can, can create a lot of hurt, a lot of hurt, quite deep hurt. And so, you know, my overriding motion for Harry, for any member of the royal family, is you know, I personally want to leave them alone and not comment on it. I don't want to make the hurt of other human beings uh, worse. Uh, and um, you know, I'll, I'll just leave it, leave it there, because I know other... Probably every person watching this programme can relate to the hurt of family disputes. And sadness. OK, Sir Ed, it's great to see you. Thank you very much indeed for coming. Thank on. you Always very much. Appreciate it.